Hello everyone! Welcome to the Jada and Stitches Show! It's almost Halloween and this week we have a special pocket pet in store for you. Did I say pocket pet? I meant pocket monster. Yes, a pocket monster. And not just any pocket monster. But don't take it from me, let's peek into the pocket and see who pops out. head at least <laughs> and he's super cute in a Halloweeny sort of way so if you're new to our pocket pet selection of toys then you might want to check out the kitty cat pocket pet we did originally because that one will give you a lot more detailed look at how we build the body or in this case the head of our pocket pets especially if you have trouble following black on screen. So I know this it starts with black. I'm going to go through the whole thing, but just in case you can't quite see what I'm doing, you can check out that other tutorial for help. And I'm going to explain exactly what I'm doing as I go. So um, give this a try first, but if you're new to it, definitely check out some of the other ones. We'll put all those links in the description box down below. That said, let's head over to the craft table, grab our hooks and yarn, and um, get working on Frankie. <laughs> In order to make Frankie here, we're going to need acrylic worsted weight yarn in black, gray, and light green. You don't need very much. This is definitely a scrap project. You're going to need two little black beads. i got a couple here. Embroidery floss, black one uh, to put in his eyes and to put on a little mouth. So you need an embroidery floss needle to go with that. You're going to need a pair of scissors, a regular yarn needle, and a 4.25 millimeter hook or a G6, and once you've got all that, plus a little stuffing, we can get started. Like all of our pocket pets, we're going to start right at the top. So grab your black yarn and make a cinch circle. We're using the single crochet stitch, so we chain one to secure our cinch circle and into that circle you're going to work eight single crochet. Once you've got eight single crochet into your cinch circle, grab the short tail, pull it nice and tight, and that's the end of row one. If you're having trouble seeing this, and I know it's a bit tricky because it's black, um, and you need help making the main body, then you can check out our Pocket Pet Kitty video. I'll put the link for that in the description box down below, but we only use black for a little bit, and once we're past that, it's pretty easy to see. So you're gonna find that first stitch, so the beginning stitch of the row, and into that stitch and each one around, you're going to work two single crochet, so we're gonna go from a stitch count of eight to 16. All right, two stitches into each stitch of row one. That brings you to 16 stitches in total at the end of round two. I know it's hard to see. Now we're going to increase once more. So you're going to work two single crochet into the next stitch, single crochet into the stitch after that, two, one, two, one, all the way around. You're going to go from a stitch count of 16 to 24. That brings us to the end of row three. You should have a total of 24 stitches all the way around. So that's the very top part of his head. Now you're just going to work the next two rows in single crochet only, no increasing. So at the ends of row four and five, you should have a total of 24 stitches. And then we're going to change color. All right, you want to work your last stitch to be in directly in line with the beginning uh, or the start point. So you can sort of see it here. There's my first row and it sort of turns into row two. That's that little bump. You should probably be able to see it on your own work fairly easily. You just take where it turns into row two, run your thumb directly up, and that should be where you work your last stitch. So if you finished your last um, stitch in row five over here, just single crochet a few more stitches, that'll put you in line. And it doesn't change your stitch count. It just makes for a nice even cap. Next, we're going to slip stitch into the next stitch. And that's it for the dark color. 
Everything from here on out should be a little easier to see. Snip your yarn. Fasten off that black color. And now grab your bright green. We're going to move on to his face. We're going to start with a slip knot. Pick up the cap, or what's sort of his hair at this point, and where you fastened off, look to the stitch directly next to that one, so this one here, and you're going to join your yarn with a single crochet. So I'm going to work over both of my little tails, I'm going to pick up a loop, pull back through both, and now you're just going to single crochet in each stitch around. Make sure you still have 24 stitches, so when you get around to this point, you're going to have um, sort of a choice. You can either work sort of where you fastened off or the piece of the stitch next to it. Either way, it doesn't matter which one you use, you want to make sure you only end up with 24 stitches at the end of row 6. And then you're going to work rows 6 through 10. So this is row 6, you're going to work rows 6 through 10 in green, single crochet, every single stitch. No increasing, just straight single crochet. So I'll see you <laughs> at the end of row 10. Make sure you have 24 stitches in every single row. All right, just before I let you go, I thought I'd show you what I meant by when you get around to this fastened off area. I've worked 23 stitches all the way around, so now it looks like there's quite a big gap there. I'm going to stretch over and grab the stitch that I fastened off into, or I slip stitched into from the previous row, and I'm going to make that my number 24, and then I'm just going to continue on into the first stitch that I joined with, and now I'm into row 7. So you're going to have a little bit of a jog here, but not much because we're going to slip stitch our color once we're finished. That's sort of how it looks from behind, or to the side. That's what it looks like when you're done. So you're not really going to see it, we're also going to cover it with one of his bolts. <laughs> So there you go. You can work every single stitch now to the end of row 10, and then we're going to switch up our colors once more, and we'll be done the body. Once you're finished with row 10, <laughs> you're going to come back around to where you, you sort of joined and where it turned into row 2, or I should say row 7. So you're just going to work one more stitch over top of that little sort of sort of, uh, I want to say lift, or that funny little raise there, and then slip stitch into the next stitch. And that'll pretty much just sort of even things out, but like I say, we're going to cover that area with a bolt, so you're not even really going to see it. That's it for that color. You can snip your yarn. Don't need much tail. And then, fasten off, grab your gray yarn, there we go, and we're going to work one row with the gray. So this is the last row. We're going to start with a slip knot. And we're going to do the same thing. So it's a little easier to see this time. There's where we fastened off. Here's the stitch next to it. That's where I'm going to join my next color. I'm going to join with a single crochet. I'm going to try and work over both my little ties here. And then I'm just going to work one row in gray, 24 stitches, all the way around. Once you've worked 24 stitches, and my last stitch is going into that same stitch that I, I slip stitched my green into and fastened off. That just brings me close to my, my join there. Slip stitch to join that row, and then fasten off. You don't need much tail. And now we're going to make the bottom. We're going to begin with a slip knot. We're going to chain seven. So there's a chain length of seven. Let me get my scissors out of the way here. We're going to skip the first chain from the hook, identify the next, and work four single crochets into it. So skip this one, go into the next one, and work one, two, three, and four. 
You're going to single crochet into each of the next four chains. Four single crochet into the last chain. And now we're working up the underside of our foundation chain. We're going to work one single crochet into each of those four stitches there. That brings us back to the beginning. You're going to identify the first single crochet and join with a slip stitch. That's row one. One more row to finish the bottom. Chain one to begin. Single crochet into the same stitch that you joined in, so the same place that your chain one came out of. You're actually going to single crochet into that twice. And then you're going to single crochet twice into each of the next three stitches. Single crochet into each of the next four. Work two single crochet into each of the next four stitches, so that's two single crochet into each of the next four stitches. And we're going to finish this off by working one single crochet into each of the next four stitches. That'll bring us back to the beginning. We're going to join with a slip stitch. We're going to fasten off leaving a long tail for sewing. And we should have 24 stitches all the way around this little bottom piece. So join with a slip stitch. Snip a long tail for sewing. Fasten off. There, and that's your bottom. You should have 24 stitches all the way around, and you have 24 stitches all the way around here. Now, we can stuff it. Once you're all stuffed up, you don't want to overstuff it, but you do want it to be nice and poofy. Um, you want your joining and finishing to be on the side, so you kind of squish it so that your sort of join slash uh, changing of rows is on the side, because like I said, we're going to cover that. Then you can thread up that long tail with your yarn needle. And then I like to try and pair up So I'm going to start this just just south of where I joined. But you're going to you should have an equal number of stitches around both parts so you can sew both parts together, picking up one pair of stitches, one from each side at a time. So just slowly work your way around sewing up the bottom. And then once you're done that, that'll be the whole body finished. Once you finish sewing all the way around and your whole piece is together, if you've got a larger little opening from where you sort of worked your first four single crochet in the bottom piece, you can take what's left of your tail and just sort of weave it in back and forth through there to sort of help cinch that little area shut. Otherwise, you can just weave your tail in back and forth through some of your stitches like you normally would, and then that part is done. The next thing we're going to do is make his bolts. <laughs> These sit on either side of his head. And I've already made one so you can see what it looks like. It should fit on the tip of your baby finger when you're done. So you're going to grab your gray. You're going to make a cinch circle. And into that circle you're going to work six single crochet. Cinch it shut. Identify the first one and work directly into it. You're going to work one more row of single crochet, no increasing, just six single crochet all the way around, and that's it. Once you've worked six single crochet all the way around, you might want to work an extra one just on top of that little bump where it turns into row two. Single crochet, or I should say slip stitch, into the last stitch or the one right after that. That kind of gives you a nice even little cap. Cut yourself a long tail. This is what you're going to sew it to your monster with. And then fasten off. You can stuff the remnants of that little tiny tail into the underside of it. You don't need to stuff these. 
Um, whatever little, if there's nothing left, that's fine. If you have a little bit of tail left, just stuff it in there. But these don't need any actual stuffing. All right, let's sew on our bolts. You're going to pick up your little monster. Find the side that has the change. And then just, we're going to work our first one right over top of that. So that gives you an idea of what you want to cover. I like to just hold mine in place. Make sure I like the look of it. Try to make sure it's right on the very side of him. And then you just pick up a piece of a stitch that's on the body and then pick up the whole stitch on the bolt. Move to the next one. So to try to pick up a stitch. There we go. And then pick up the bolt. And just sort of pause every once in a while. Make sure it's still in the same place. You can kind of Move it around if you want. You still have a little bit of flexibility when you've only put in a couple stitches. And then just slowly work your way around. Once you've sewn all the way around your whole bolt, decide which side you want to be the front. I think this is going to be my front. And then just put your needle into the body, bring it out into a, sort of a space between stitches somewhere in the back and just let that tail hang there because we're going to tie the other tail from our other bolt to it. So grab your second bolt, thread up the tail, try to position it so that it's directly opposite the other bolt, hold it in place, and sew it down. When you've finished sewing down bolt number two, same thing, stick your needle into the head right close to the bolt, come out through the same spot that you brought out the first string, and then knot them both together twice and then you can take your needle poke that knot back into the body and then you can sort of grab it with your, your needle and just sort of wiggle that needle back and forth and eventually weave in those ends and they become part of the stuffing. Next we're going to put on his eyes and his cute little mouth. So. Grab your beads and your embroidery floss and embroidery needle. Take a good look at your little, <laughs> your little Frankie and decide whereabouts you want to put his eyes. Now, if it helps to look at sort of rows, I put his eyes one, two, three rows down. So they're sitting in between rows three and four of the green. And they're sitting right in the middle of his face, approximately three stitches apart. So if you can pick up your face, Measure three rows down, so there's the little sort of space between rows three and four of the green. And then take your beads and place them somewhere in that, that little line. Try to figure out where the middle of his face is, if you want them close together or if you want them further apart. That's entirely up to you. What you do want to do, though, is grab your needle with your embroidery floss go through a space between two of the stitches, come out where you want to anchor your first eye, and leave a little bit of tail. So maybe three or four centimeters of it. Keep your thumb on it if you have to when you're sewing down the first eye. This is what we're going to do to tie our knots so that we don't actually have any knots on the outside of our face. So go ahead, sew down both the eyes, and then I'll help you with the mouth. Once you've sewn in eye number one and eye number two, and you've just come out of finishing the last, I've only sewn down maybe twice with both eyes. Because I'm using embroidery floss, that's six, technically six strands of thread going through with each swipe of the needle. So just passing it through a couple times. Now you're going to take your thread, go right down next to the eye, and you're going to come out about where you want his little mouth. So over here, I'll show you. I've got his mouth sitting on opposite sides of one stitch. So his mouth is one stitch wide, and it sits right in the middle of between the eyes, one row down from where the eyes are sitting. So that means that this stitch right here, and you can see both my pieces, so this little stitch right here, on either side of that is where I want my mouth to sit. So I'm going to bring my needle right out at the corner. 
I'm going to go to the other side of that stitch, about opposite where I just brought my, my thread out, and I'm going to poke my needle down fairly far, maybe like a whole stitch worth. Try not to split your thread. Come up on the inside of it. Don't pull too tight. Make sure you've still got some slack. Just give it a little bit so that you can... There we go. Pull until while you're pulling down, you've pulled your mouth into a cute little smile. <laughs> and remember where we brought our, our thread in up here? You're going to go back down through the very same place you just came out with your needle on the other side of the mouth. So you came up on the inside, you're going to go down the outside of the mouth, back through the same little place, and bring the needle back out through the same space where you entered originally. Again, try not to pull too tightly. We can tighten this up in a minute. Now, take both your ends. I know it's hard to see because it's black on black. Here they are over here. You're going to tie a knot, remember to tie it twice, and try not to tie too, too tightly, because you don't want to pull your little mouth out of shape. And then same thing, you can take your yarn needle, poke that knot back inside, so just like that, and then same thing, you can wiggle it back and forth until they disappear. And if you're having trouble with that, you can just thread them up. So go back through the same hole with your yarn needle, thread them up, and just pull them into the body. Okay, if that pulled your mouth out of alignment a little bit, you can take your yarn needle, slip it under both sides of the mouth, try not to get the yarn, and pull up gently on it, and then try to slip your needle into that little tiny stitch you made just pull on it a little bit. There you go. Maybe tug on your eyes. Just tug your face around a little bit and that will pull everything into place. So there! We've got a smiling face and two eyes. Now all we have to do is put in his stitches over his brow. So you're going to keep your yarn needle. You're going to take a length of black yarn, not too much, maybe 30 centimeters, 12 inches, somewhere in there. And we're going to do the same kind of concept. So, we want to run his brow <laughs> about one stitch down. So in that space between rows one and two of the green area, and you want it to run on opposite, just sort of be, be wide enough that it kind of comes in and out of its face on opposite sides of his eyes. So just outside of where his eyes are. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to pick a spot between stitches. I know it's hard to see. You can even do it down here if you want, but pick a spot between stitches. Bring your needle out where you want it to start. So between rows one and two of the green area. Make sure you don't pull all of your yarn out. Leave a enough tail that you can tie a knot with. Lay it <laughs> across that area where you want his little stitched brow to be and then put your hook, or I should say your needle, in where you want it to end. Then you're going to bring it out about a stitch back. Try not to pull too, too tightly. Go right over top. So directly below where you brought it out. And then on an angle, you're going to come up a stitch over. There we go. Same thing, but just below, right below, directly below where you brought it out. On a diagonal, bring it out, a stitch over. <laughs> this is so cute. And once more, directly below where you brought it out, and this time you're going to bring it out where you brought it in originally. So we're going to do that whole tie a knot twice and then weave in the tails. <laughs> and there you go! Two Frankensteins! <laughs>
<laughs> These guys are adorable. They are surely to be a hit with anybody who likes to collect little Halloween figurines. Or, if you live in an area where you don't have a whole lot of trick-or-treaters coming to visit, then one of these in the trick-or-treating bag would certainly be enjoyed. <laughs> and that's it for this week on the Jade and Stitches Show. Thank you so much for tuning in and spending some time with us today. Remember, you can share all of our videos with your crafty friends on all of the socials. You can like our videos if you like them, especially if you want to see more. And you can subscribe if you haven't already. And until next week, stay safe, stay crafty, and have an awesome, awesome week. Bye, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>